a lift from my whistle. Come give me a tune. Do you feel what you feel in my food? No, <laughs> wait, what? It's a fitness class. Imagine going to a fitness class with an instructor who's like, don't put in the work. All of this means nothing. Do the exercise or don't do the exercise. I'm still getting paid. Who brought the little Debbies? <laughs> Fat people will take in a <sighs> breath of air and the whole world has something to say about it. Negatively, obviously. But then people can be doing hella fun shit. Everyone's like, mm -mm, nobody sees nothing. This TikTok immediately reminded me of one of my favorite tweets. It goes, people who walk around with a bottle of water always feel like they made it in life. And it was retweeted by someone who's like, the sweetest proof you can drink water and mind your business and people will still talk and that is the truth especially on the internet you are not having this experience because you are fat you're having this experience because you exist with other people simple as that Hmm, so remember that last TikTok about minding your own business and people still having something to say about it? How are you just going to decide that everyone at the gym who doesn't look like you is there because they hate their appearance? This is so much projection, and I don't mean to be mean, but those are her emotions that she feels towards herself that she's projecting on strangers to make herself feel better. The fact that she added, and people automatically praise you, makes me think that she is envious of the positive reinforcement she sees those other people receiving and feels like she's more worthy of it. Why can't everyone who's taking the time to take care of their bodies at the gym be worthy of praise? So first off, I just want to say that I'm happy for her and the success she's having on her journey in recovering, but what I don't understand is why she's subtly shaming people for positively reinforcing her behavior. Here's why. Some of the most popular rhetoric I hear in this community is you can't look at someone and determine anything about their health, but she's sort of implying that people should have just known that she had an eating disorder and that she hated herself and was miserable inside and that's just not fair perhaps people just believed you and were happy that you found something you were passionate about sometimes it just feels impossible to win here <laughs> Now that I have your attention with that video, I would like to play a game of Spot the Difference. The video you just saw versus this one that I'm about to show you a screenshot of. In this video, she's doing the same exact trend. What's the difference? Both wearing shorts. Where's the difference? You know the difference. I know the difference. Wanna tell me why I was shown this notification? I was scrolling through my For You page and I came across that video. Do you think this video is appropriate for younger users 13 to 17? Yes, I do. Not showing them that video and showing them this notification is inappropriate. You're telling them that their bodies, if they're larger, are inherently and inappropriate. That's the harmful message. Stop it with this fat phobia. I am so tired of this app shaming large bodies. I'm done. This is stupid. Wow, girl. So... 
my jaw dropped when I first watched this. Like, I just can't believe she said it would be inappropriate to not show this content to minors. That could have been some easy common ground. That aside, what she's talking about, like them being dressed the same and dancing the same. I actually learned something about the TikTok algorithm recently that explains this in logical terms instead of fat phobic nonsense. So what the algorithm is detecting for in the inappropriate content is the amount of clothing in relation to the amount of skin. And since larger bodies just have more skin period, that itself can trigger the algorithm to censor the content. So yes, you're wearing the same clothes, but what is being detected for the second girl is a whole lot more skin. And because it's not perfect and probably programmed to be safe rather than sorry, this sort of content just gets flagged. <sighs> no. If I see one more person try to make this excuse, saying that, oh, they're not being mean because they're stating a health fact, uh, 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 you know exactly what you're doing. Y'all see a fat person enjoying their life, enjoying their body, enjoying food, and you can't fucking stand it. You cannot help but to stick your ugly ass opinion in there. I'm genuinely sorry that your life sucks so bad that you have to harass fat people on the internet to feel a little better about yourself. And if you want to learn something, what you're saying is fact is actually a lot more complicated than that. I have some research linked in my bio in case you want to challenge your worldview. So, unless you agree with her, you're harassing her? I don't understand why she gets to decide everyone's intentions for them, decide how you mean the words you are saying, but you're not allowed to assume anything about her. And any assumptions you might make are just rooted in fat oppression, so you need to read up. What I eat in a day as a neurodivergent fat person who is not on a diet. One of the main things I realized when I stopped dieting was my insatiable hunger was not from a failure to be a good dieter, but it was from the dieting itself. I was hungry. I was not eating enough. My neurodivergence has also played a big role in how I eat. It often makes me eat the same things all the time or not be able to get the executive functioning together to cook myself a meal. And this whole time I have been feeling shame and guilt because diet culture tells me that I'm supposed to be able to do all of these things all the time and if I don't, I'm a failure and just lazy and not disciplined. So eat whatever you want, but please don't try to sell it as some revolutionary act of self-care to indulge your every whim. Diet culture is another term used in this community to demonize anything that isn't unexceptional self-indulgence. Food is literally our body's fuel, not some emotional crutch to cope with the world. And when you treat it like the latter, you experience the consequences. Even as a thin person, I feel the difference in myself when I eat junk or I eat like I know I'm supposed to. Wait, what? It's a fitness class. Imagine going to a fitness class with an instructor who's like, don't put in the work. All of this means nothing. Do the exercise or don't do the exercise. I'm still getting paid. Who brought the little Debbies? <laughs> like, what does that motivate you to do besides absolutely nothing? Content warning for fat phobic language and BMI talk. If you had to guess what percentage of the US population do you think is overweight or obese? I'll give you some other figures to compare it to. Approximately 1% of the population is a redhead. About 1% of the population is intersex. Around 7% of the US population is estimated to be some form of LGBTQ+. Around half of all people would have been assigned female at birth, most of whom identify as women. And 38% of the population has an issue with illicit drug use. Have you come up with a number? Are you ready to hear what it actually is? 82.6% of people in the United States are overweight or obese. 
according to the BMI statistics from the CDC. It is more normal to be fat than it is to be skinny. So I'm not exactly sure what she thinks she's saying, but what I'm hearing is the obesity epidemic in America is thriving. And maybe she thinks because the majority of the population seems aligned with her lifestyle that it's correct. But that's a really slippery slope to slide down. There's been times in America where the majority of the population thought that women shouldn't vote. Did that make it right? Because more people thought that? No. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to hang out on this video. I really would love to hear your thoughts down below. I'm going to end it here today and see you in the next video. Bye.